Testing, testing. All right. I think I'm live. Let me check this. Looks like I'm live. All right. I got sound. Yay. 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 Welcome. I think that everything looks ready. Let me just see here. All the screens. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful to be with you all and finally have more energy. Okay, awesome. I can see that I'm live. All right, so if you're new to one of these lives, what I would love for you to do is put hashtag replay in the chat when you're catching this and then also answering any of the prompts or questions that I ask. Uh, that would be amazing if you watch this and you can comment and share where you're at with some of this stuff. I'm so excited. Okay, Lakshmi activation. Collaborating and co-creating with ease and grace to take you to the next level while increasing abundance. So one of the reasons that I'm doing uh, these activations with different uh, ascended female masters, goddesses, amazing women in our field, in, the, in this realm and beyond, is because when we step into different vibrations of goddesses or ascended masters or female archetypes, we can start to embody parts of them. We start to be able to transmute our own energy to be like Lakshmi to have abundance and beauty, to be like Green Tara or Kuan Yin or anyone that I've done any of these activations for. And the activations I've left in the Facebook group, so you can always go back and watch any of them if you've missed them, uh, especially if there's a particular female that archetype that you identify with or you feel drawn towards, then I would definitely suggest watching that activation uh, just to really get into your own energy with it. So if you're here, please say hi. Oh, you pulled Lakshmi last night. Hi, Soko. Oh, so glad you're here. Um, that is a crazy, awesome synchronicity. Whoa. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I, I, I would like to get like, you know how they have the little, the little tiny, um, pictures of the deities that you can put, uh, on your altar or wherever I kind of, I'm really feeling like, okay, I want a Lakshmi, a Saraswati, um, you know, some of these goddesses I don't have, like I have a big Durga, I have a bigger Kali, right. But some of the ones I don't have, um, I would like, and obviously I think everyone knows I have a huge Isis, um, and picture of Mary and Yeshua, but also like just having these reminders, these physical reminders of the women, the goddesses, the feminine archetypes, the ascended masters that you feel drawn to helps to download and receive some of their frequency and energy. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so excited, so excited to do this. So I think that most of you know, but I will share, I guide women to transform and transmute their life through soul unfoldment and rememberings, which allow you to increase your self-worth, confidence, power, intuitive gifts, and self-mastery on a whole new level. I help women evolve into the embodiment of the divine feminine that is already within you, right? To really step into that divine feminine. What is she? How does your version of divine feminine show up in the world? So my initiation and certification is nine month program, and it allows you to become a thriving coach and feminine leader for clients, for your friends, for your family, everyone in your life, all relationships and starting to interact with all of them as the divine feminine, which is fierce, compassionate grace. It's one of the those three words I really am drawn to at this time. Um, so it was pretty cool. Like uh, Soko was there on our last call 
we talked about how to heal relationships with people who are difficult and how to take back the power that you may be giving away and love them like never before. It's really magical stuff. Um, I've been thinking about it, sitting with it and shifting a lot. I don't know about you, Soko, but it's like, <laughs> that was a powerful call that we had yesterday. And uh, for the initiation, other women, you know, I'm talking Soko, but everybody, you can join at any time. There's only two spots left with the 2K scholarship. Um, so you can type in the chat, reach out if you want me to reach out to you, or you can always click on the link to have a heart to heart and we can talk about it. Um, so yeah, let me know. It was an amazing call. Like just thinking about, just thinking about the grief that I have in that one relationship. Um, I wasn't able to do the meditation yet, but just realizing that it was grief was starting to transmute my energy towards that person. It was, it was magical. It was really cool. So, all right. Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth, happiness, loveliness, grace, charm, and splendor. Lakshmi is the divine power, the divine feminine power that transforms dreams into reality, which is what we call manifestation or womifestation. If you're on this divine feminine kick, then it's womifestation, right? Yeah. And I love it. So cool. Yeah. For myself and others. Totally. Totally. Um, so I would love you to put in the chat, whether you're watching this now or later. So if you're watching it later, do hashtag replay, but put in the chat. What do you want to manifest? What is it that you want to manifest? We're coming up on the new moon. This is a great time to start to think about what you want to manifest for the next month, what you want to manifest over the next year, what you want to manifest for the next couple of years for your life. Like what is, what are these things you want to manifest a loving partner who honors, respects, and admires you, or you want to manifest extra income, doing something that you love, helping other women rise into their power, right? Do you want to manifest, like, it could be a big dream. You know, I am, I am manifesting a temple, right? That was something that I mentioned yesterday that in my live, I was like, oh, I don't know if I really share this, but it's starting to happen. Uh, it's happening. <laughs> uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, it's going to at least be a retreat center, but I really want a temple up there or a pyramid. I haven't gotten a clear signal from the universe yet, but it's probably going to be a divine feminine temple. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Or it might be a sacred sexuality temple. Ugh, yeah. Um, so that's, those are things I'm thinking about. What am I, what am I going to manifest? I want to go on a trip with my beloved next year. That's something I want to manifest. Um, let me think, but it's the next couple of months. So we have November, December, January, February, March. So over the next six months, I want to be able to continue to nurture my relationships with my family and increase the amount of love I have for them, right? So yeah, it, the thing is, if you put it in the chat, you're declaring it, just like I'm declaring it now. So I'm gonna go on a trip with my beloved because I'm talking about it. I'm. I'm thinking about it. I'm feeling it. I'm giving words to it. I'm writing it down. Right. So this is, this is some of the tricks to manifestation, if you will, not really tricks, but it's being really clear with the universe. So my mic is kind of in the way, but I'm going to put it in the chat. Cause I don't do anything. I don't tell anyone to do anything I'm not willing to do or that I'm not doing go on a trip with my beloved. Bam. That's one of mine. Um, okay. So it's in the chat. But yeah. Bigger dreams, hearts, desires. What is it that you want to manifest? What are you going to shift your energy and your vibration so that you hold the vibration of what it is as if it's already here and then magnetize it to you? Yeah. Still thinking is fine. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm still thinking. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I like it. You're allowed to keep thinking. Um, but it is important to think about. And it can be simple things like, um, I want to be more loving towards myself. Uh, one of mine last month that's now manifested is I want to write every morning 
and read my um, erotic book every night. It's a book about Eros. It's, it's actually like a religious um, mystical book. It's not, it's not, it's not a, um, what's it called? Novel. <laughs> um, but I, was, I wanted to read that book and I was sitting there for like a week or two and I was like, okay, 15 minutes every night, I'm going to read my book. 15 minutes every morning, I'm going to type whatever's coming to me. And I've been typing my dreams. And so now my dreams are getting more vivid, which I love. Um, so that's like a little simpler. It's not like going on a trip or whatever, but yeah, it can be anything. Self-love things are great. So just think about that um, because it is important when you declare it, you write it down, you say it, it brings it to you. Okay. So clear intentions for abundance and evolution is so important, especially as we enter into a new moon. So it's fine if you end up make, thinking about it for a couple of days, because we're, we're almost in that new moon energy. Let me look at my moon map, October, dark moon, 25th. Oh yeah. Cause we have the eclipse next week. Yeah. Eclipses are crazy. Um, I'll just pause. <laughs> we still have more Lakshmi to deal with. I'll just pause. Ooh, publish a book of poetry. That's freaking awesome. Yes. I'm going to add that energy. Thanks. I'm going to publish a book of poetry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is. I'm going to read it. That's awesome. I love poetry. I don't feel like I'm very great at writing it. I love poetry. Um, yeah. So eclipses show us our shadow, right? So just be prepared, start to prepare for this new moon slash eclipse, because it can be a little wonky, can be a little wavering. Things can come up, feelings can come up, things can arise that were in the shadow. Uh, so it's good if you can plan for next Wednesday to have some time to meditate, to have some time to journal, to have some time to be by yourself and allow whatever your higher self wants to reveal to you through the eclipse, allow that to be able to come through. So side note, eclipse is coming. Okay, so uh, Lakshmi has, you know, she has a, a bunch of mantras and uh, songs. She has a yantra, all of the goddesses have a mantra and a yantra. Well, most of them that I know of. Um, a yantra is the, geometric symbol, right? And a mantra is the words that are chanted or sang. So Om Shri Malalakshmi Namaha is the one that I like. I'll put that in the chat. Um, I also put in there Diva Pramal's version. So like just listening to the chant will bring you more abundance, more Lakshmi energy. Let me find the share. Okay. Put that in the chat for you all too. Um, so I was listening to it as I was preparing to share Lakshmi's heart with you all from my humanness, right? Uh, so yeah, it's a really, that's a really pretty one. And remember when you play mantra in the background, right? It's, it, it, it brings a sacred energy into the space. And this one specifically is Lakshmi. So it's abundance. It's um, grace, it's beauty, it's confidence, right? It's being able to manifest, right? Drawing that dreams into reality. So I have a couple affirmations that I would like to read and you can say them out loud with me or after I say them, which is what I would suggest doing, uh, is saying them out loud and feeling them, feeling them as true. And you can also just listen if you want. Okay. I am rich. I am happy. I am wealthy. I am a clear, I am clear about my desires and manifest my ideal reality. I am beautiful. I am graceful. I am confident. I transform my dreams into reality. So just notice. When you say I'm rich or I'm wealthy or any of them, I'm beautiful. If there was a waiver of resistance and I would love it if you share that in the chat, like, okay, 
this one was a little tricky or I don't really feel rich or I don't really feel beautiful. For me, I had a waiver, <laughs> um, not right now, but I used to have a waiver around being I'm rich or I'm wealthy, um, I'm beautiful and I'm confident. All of those, I didn't used to be able to say them and, and feel them and be embodied in them. Um, so I want to share a little bit about that. And it comes from my evolution of scarcity, being in a scarcity mindset to being in an abundance mindset, right? So scarcity is, I can't do the things. I can't do that because it takes money. I can't, I don't have any money. Well, that's not possible for me. Well, I'm not rich. I'm not wealthy. I'm not abundant. Abundance is a vibration. Richness is a vibration. And there's so many more ways to be rich and wealthy and step into that vibration outside of monetary. So yes, of course, if you have lots of money, you might, you might still have a scarcity mindset. You might not actually still have the abundance vibration, the Lakshmi, this beauty, charm, splendor, abundance. Like it's a very lush and juicy vibration. And so for me, when I was in my scarcity mindset, I started to think about the other ways I was wealthy and focus on those because I, the bank account didn't say I was wealthy, right? So for me, it was like, okay, I'm wealthy in my relationship. I'm wealthy in the fact that I can you know, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, right? And so I started to go through and this is what I would suggest because it helped for me shifting from scarcity to abundance, which is a huge deal. And the scarcity, I still think that's got that patriarchal blah attached to it. It's got some of that like putting women down, right? It's like, if you think about it, like our great grandmothers didn't have rights, right? Or grandmothers even didn't have rights, weren't able to like make money. Luckily, my great, my grandmother was able to, she was the breadwinner. My other gra grandmother never worked. <laughs> it's very contrast, right? So it's like, they had to have a man to have a vote, to have money to have, and that is not the case anymore. And we have to shed any of that scarcity or that like all that type of mindset out, out. So always thinking about what are the things that make you wealthy? What makes you wealthy? What makes you feel abundant? What makes you feel rich? I am rich. I am rich. I am rich. Is that hard? Is that a hard thing to say? Is it hard to feel it? I'd love to know in the chat. It was hard for me. So I totally get it. <laughs> um, so some of the things that helped me was I think the first thing, and these are the seeds I would love to plant for you, the seeds that were planted for me, which was richness, richness and abundance is a frequency. It's a vibration. It's energy. Money is energy, right? And then richness and abundance is a vibration. And you can hold that vibration and it will magnetize more abundance to you. Another thing is money loves to flow. That was, that's, so if you're in like a, um, middle-class mindset or a scarcity mindset, then it's hard to understand that money loves to flow because you might've been taught to like make it and hold on to it. And that's not what my, the nature of money as energy is. It comes and it goes, it wants to flow. It want, I mean, it's just, that is its nature. So that was a seed for me that was planted a long time ago where I was like, oh, okay. And I really had to digest that and think about it. Okay, money loves to flow. Money loves me and flows effortlessly to me. I can add that into our affirmations. Money loves me and flows effortlessly to me. That was hard for me to say. Um, and it was a mantra from, of mine for a while to start to shift. I was like, okay. If abundance, if wealth, if all these things come from me shifting my mindset around it, then I have to shift my mindset. And that was like my family's 
scarcity or middle class mindset, right? That was in me, and which is thank goodness no longer, but it's it's still challenging because they're like, why are you investing in yourself? <laughs> like you should be investing in retirement or whatever the thing is, right? So just starting to think about that. Um, what's his name? There's the there's a podcast. Let me see if I can find it. There's let me look on my podcast app. There's a podcast. Let me see library. It should probably be my library. He's really, really good. Um, the successful mind podcast. Yeah. David Nagel. David Nagel is really good for getting out of scarcity mindset and into abundance mindset and, um, middle-class mindset to millionaire mindset, like those breaking through some of that stuff. So that's a great podcast. If you are, if any of this is resonating for you, I used to listen to it a lot. Um, so for me, my story about money, one of my stories, um, was I was in the scarcity. I was like, Oh, I don't have any money or I can't do this thing. And I can't do that thing. And I was like shutting the energy in the doors because I was in this scarcity mindset, which is contracted. It's not expansive. Abundance is expansive. Abundance is like, yes, pure potentiality. I can make anything happen. There's plenty of resources everywhere for everyone. Like, right. It's a very expansive scarcity is contracting. So for me, I, I took a stand for myself. I realized that I was in a toxic codependent relationship and that my partner was unwilling to change. I asked him to, if he was willing to do therapy, to go see the pastor, to talk to anyone about his um, emotional abuse. And he, he admitted to being emotionally abusive and refused, flat out refused to get help. And that was when I was like, okay, if I stay, I will suffocate. I will become an addict or I will, I will be trying to cope with life somehow. I'll become unhealthy. I might even die because my spirit will feel so like emotional abuse is bad, right? It's really hard when someone is gaslighting you all the time and twisting everything you're saying. It's not an easy thing. Um, so I took a stand for myself, even though I had no money. <laughs> That's what I thought, right? I thought I had no money which, you know, I didn't really have a bunch of numbers in my bank account, but I left. I found somewhere that I could afford to live. I left and then I invested almost $8,000 to become a coach. And I was terrified. I put it all on a credit card. I did not have that money in the bank. And my coach said, just like I would tell you, if you do this coaching certification, <clears throat> you become a coach, you can earn all of that money back. Like within the year, you could earn it back. And I did. And that's when I started to really start to shift. I think I said that twice <laughs> about money. I was like, wait a second. I invested this sum and then I worked really hard, learned how to be a coach, started serving others. And then it, I was able to make it all back. So the money flowed out and it flowed back in. It likes to move. Okay. And so some of these concepts started to make sense to me and my confidence started to grow. Cause I was like, okay, I was able to really help people change their lives through Ayurveda and health habits, health secrets. I think most of society doesn't know about Ayurveda. It's like magical, <clears throat> excuse me. And so that was like, that was the scariest. One of the scariest decisions ever was leaving a toxic relationship so that I could expand and investing in myself when I didn't have a bunch of numbers in my bank account. And that was the best decision of my life. Those two things were pivotal and completely changed me completely. Um, and I share that to say, like, if you're in a toxic relationship, <laughs> you can leave, it will get better. Right. This, I'm totally open and willing to talk about that because that is, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. It's scary. And it was, it was the best decision. And becoming a coach was the best decision because it taught me that investing in myself, then I'm able to learn and grow and expand my vibration. And then my reality shifts, my friends shift. 
my, my social situation shifts, what my, my habits, my hobbies shift, everything gets closer and more in tune with my soul and what I'm supposed to be doing, whatever that means, right? But what I feel called to do, what is alignment, alignment of me, not of what the media is telling me or other people or my voice is, becomes louder and then I can honor and follow that. So huge, investing in yourself is huge. You know, I'm at $67,000 now of investing in myself. That's crazy, you know? And I don't regret any of it. Every time I make it back, it's fine. Like I just keep growing and expanding. So I wanted to share that because Lakshmi is all about this abundance vibration and money flows. The other tip I wanted to share with you all of all these tips is this book also really helped me. Tosha Silver is amazing. All of her things are surrendered to the divine. So this is, it's not your money. And I did almost all the exercises in this book. There's a bunch. This is a really good one to go through with a friend. Um, but yeah, it's not my money. <laughs> it's not your money. It's all the divines and it's energy and it's flowing. And that is a hard thing to wrap your mind around until you experience it. Oh, thanks, Soko. Yeah. It's not an easy thing. And you did it. <laughs> you left a toxic relationship. I left a toxic relationship. And look at us now. So much better off than where we would have been. So yeah, thank you for <laughs> thank you for putting that in the chat. Not an easy thing to do and not really an easy thing to share either. So thank you for, for listening. Um, but yes, Tosha Silver. She also has like uh, different decks. You know, so this is the one I pulled this morning, but it's reframe. And this, this is happening for me, not to me. This is happening for me, not to me, which I think is really important. Worth. This is a beautiful card. You have been worthy to belong to love all along without any need to improve. In fact, you are love itself, the tiger. And we're in the year of the tiger, which is awesome. Um, and then this is the last one I'll read with you guys, but there's, these cards are great. Um, each person's road to the inner Lord is extraordinary and personal. How liberating to listen inside and sense moment to moment, what is needed. So this card is intuition. Um, so they're just nice. There's nice reminders. Um, Ooh, I kind of want to read one more. I said I was done, but this one just really resonates for me right now. When you make divine intelligence your foundation, you finally have a fixed star to follow, right? This is what one of the things I tell anyone when they're, you know, like considering doing the divine feminine initiation and certification or investing in themselves. I'm like, is it a full body? Yes. Like, is your body like, yes, this is it's time. It's time for me to step more into my power and love myself and if that's intuition, if your body's like not a full body, yes, don't do it. <laughs> it's not time. Okay. Um, so let me see if there's anything about Lakshmi. We did our affirmations. We shared the mantra. I see that there's, there was another mantra and, oh no, that was me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Any questions ladies with Lakshmi and energy and vibration, like all of these tips, helped shift me and doing the Lakshmi mantra, singing, having her around in your energy field will help shift. Tosha Silver is amazing, divine abundance. Um, so I hope some of these things are help, helping you and resonating for sure. And I think the last thing I really felt called to share is like, if you don't take a stand for yourself, no one else will. Like, that was a big one for me. And that's patriarchal wounding too. It's like the prince will save you. No, he fucking won't. He's not going to save you. The prince will discover you. No, no, you have to discover you and you have to take a stand for you. And those, the media and the movies and the patriarchy, like it's not helpful when it comes to woman, divine feminine empowerment. It's starting to shift a little. I mean, what was it? Marvel, Captain Marvel. I didn't really think that movie was that great, 
but we're starting we're starting to see like wonder woman like we're starting to see more women in power in media but it's still a little like you know <laughs> it's close we're getting there but it's close um but anyway so in closing if you um yeah this is happening for me not to me yeah isn't that an amazing reframe that's why i read it i was just like oh my god that's amazing um i'll hold that one up again just because it's like I like her cards. Like, it's just, they're really nice reminders. And this is a shift. This is a huge shift. This is going from victim to being empowered, right? This is going from victim to trusting. Nothing is happening to you. It's all happening for you. The universe is always conspiring in your highest favor. If you believe that, you'll see it more. Like, that's the cool part about the all the yoga stuff this is why I love teaching yoga for so many years, because you're not your mind. <laughs> your mind's like your phone. It's a tool. Don't let it control you. <laughs> okay. That's, that was, that's why I love yoga. I'll get off on yoga. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is great. My mind's crazy. I'm glad I'm not my mind. A tissue in my pocket. Um, yeah. So yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I would like to know what the yantra is too, because I don't think I looked that one up. Let's look. Let's look really quick. I don't have an appointment for a little while, so I can hang out for a few more minutes. Ooh, pretty. Um, so it's like the star of David in a flower. Um, if you just like Google yantra and Lakshmi, you'll see it. Yeah, it's the star of David in a flower, which most of them are like kind of similar. Um, Collies, I know, is like just a triangle. It's not like the star of David. Um, let's see, I, I can probably share it really quick. Let me see if it'll be big enough to share. Because I think it's important, Yantra, like the thing about Yantra is like it's, it's geometric symbol, like sacred geometry. So when you look at them, you in, are imparted some of that vibration or energy. Um, let's see if I can, come on, preview. Yeah, all right, let's pull this up because I think it matters. Share screen. Dun, dun, dun. Tell me if you see it. Oh, let's look at it for a second. Take, let's do seven deep breaths. I love the dot in the middle, oh my gosh, okay. Let me see if I have this mantra to pull up to. Beautiful. <sighs> Lost my mouse. Let me see if I can do this. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Soko about that. Didn't have my original sound on, so I don't know if you guys could really hear the mantra. There's a setting in Zoom pro tip that allows sound to be shared more easily. Okay, let me check the chat. Anything else coming up? Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna like your comment, Soko. Thanks for asking about that yantra. Yeah, and it's cool because each like I, I say, I keep saying each, I don't know that for sure because there's a lot of goddesses, but all of the main goddesses that most of us hear about um, in Hinduism have yantras. And I think it's just like the chakras, the chakras all have a yantra, right? Those symbols, you see it, you know, how you see those symbols like on flags or, um, you know, whatever, when people share posts, <laughs> you have that symbol, that's like the yantra for the chakra. Right. So each of the deities have one and there's a really powerful one, which I share with 
anyone, any clients that are working with me, which is the holy womb chakra, right? I was looking at it yesterday because of this mother healing stuff we're doing in the course. And the holy womb chakra, uh, the holy womb yantra is, I had to um, do this like 108 days of chanting and meditating and looking at it and um, supposed to be drawing it every full and new moon, which I don't always do, but I'm, I'm working on it. Um, uh, but it's, it's really wild. It's really cool. And they found it on these papyrus manuscripts and in the manuscripts, it's like, these will be discovered back when the divine feminine is rising and when women are reclaiming their power and their womb. So really cool stuff. All right. I think that's it. Yeah. Let me know if you have any other questions in the chat before I sign off. Yeah. Reframing is so powerful. Oh, it's so, this is so much more fun for me when you guys show up live and then we can chat and hang out a little bit. Thank you for being here. It really touches my heart. If you're watching this later, put hashtag replay and let us know. Like, I think Adele, you missed it, but I asked in the chat um, for you to put in the chat, what do you want to manifest? And I talked about the eclipse a little bit coming up, so... I'll put the questions in the chat. What do you want to manifest? What are your bigger dreams? What are the desires of your heart? Putting them in the chat, saying them out loud, like, and typing them and putting them in the chat will bring them faster to you. You will magnetize them faster because you're declaring it and you're declaring it in a space where there's other people. There's five of us right now, right? So there's Soko's watching, Meg's watching, Adele's watching, I'm here, right? So they're... There's more energy. There's more people. People are powerful, right? So if you put like, I love what Meg put. She's going to publish a book on poetry. I put, I'm going to go on a trip with my beloved. Um, yeah, we're bringing that into us. Like this is the power of community. This is what, what Lakshmi, collaborating and co-creating. It's so much more powerful than trying to do it alone. The patriarchy wanted us to believe that we needed to be alone and be fighting each other to secure our man for our rights and our home. And that's all bullshit. We're releasing all of it. Women are way more powerful together. We're super magical. And we, we, we all have wombs. Think about it. It's a bunch of powerful wombs together. Like, yes, let's bring this reality in here. Ah, autumn. Woohoo! Yeah. So what do you want to manifest? Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Look at all my friends are here. This is so great. Yeah, so think about it though, especially, I'm gonna repeat now a little bit of what I said earlier, but new moon, eclipsed, a lot's gonna happen in the next two weeks. Think about it. Think about what am I, what am I gonna create for this next time? What do I want to manifest? And listen, listen to the mantra, Lakshmi mantra. Look at the yantra. Like build that energy and that connection with the goddess of wealth and abundance and charm and splendor in your life. It's really powerful. And I think that you guys know, but if you're ready to ascend spiritually and embody this divine feminine essence and inspire others, and become visible to the soulmate people, right? So you raise your frequency and then the people at that frequency, right? What's happened for me is more and more soul alignment friends, clients, relationships are coming into my life more and more. So when you do this type of work, ascending spiritually, embodying your unique divine feminine, this reality is magnetized to you. I mean, even a story with Autumn is pretty amazing. Autumn, so some of you might know, because I've mentioned this healing amazingness of dancing under the moon naked with some women, like oh, Autumn was there. Like, how did I meet her? How, what? It's because I'm in this frequency, right? And so you start to magnetize these realities that are so healing. So increasing your vibration to experience deep, lush, and juicy relationships with people who love, respect, and admire you, like we all deserve that. If that's not something happening in your life, it's time. It's time to fully honor and love your sexual erotic nature and amplify vitality and increase your manifestation ability, right? So... If these are things you desire and you want to have a heart-to-heart -heart chat with me, I had one the other day. It was so beautiful. Um, you can put let's chat or reach out in the comments and I'll reach out to you or you can click the link and set up a time for us to talk.
So I love holding space. Thank you all so much for being here for the Lakshmi. It's man, that scarcity mindset to abundance mindset, like that's a big deal. It's it's a hard thing to shift and break free from. So hopefully some of these tips that I gave during the live will are inspiring you. And remember, Toshka Silver is awesome. She's great for abundance. Ooh, yes. Okay, we got this. We got to say these out loud, right? Okay, so all of us together, right? Feeling this for Adele. I want to publish my novel to share with the world. I want to shoot my pilot to share with the world. I want to feel totally connected with the divine and activate my goddess energy. Yes, and so it is. Everybody feel it? See, this is this is what we're talking about, activation. You feel the energy now? It's it's really activated. This is this is beautiful. Oh, Soko had to leave. Wait, wait, wait. Ooh, okay. Soko said drawing calling in, magnetizing to herself a new car and a beach house. I don't know why there's a question mark, but what what? Beach house for Soko. Okay, um, I wanna create cultural shift for families by prioritizing attachment and bonding clarifying stages of human development and needs in doing so heal myself my brothers and sisters and save ourselves yes yes Lakshmi hangs in my window heck yeah Lakshmi needs to hang in my window love it okay I want to throw something else in there I'm like what a going on the trip with my beloved just I I really just want to help more women rise in this power that's 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 why I'm, that's why I'm doing this <laughs> is calling in souls soulmate women to rise so all right love you all thank you for being in the lakshmi activation energy with me it's powerful Mwah. i'll see you guys soon remember some space give yourself some time and space during the eclipse meditate journal don't fill up next wednesday <laughs> give yourself a little a little bit of time all right. Wow. That was powerful, ladies. Thank you. Mm. All right. I will see you soon. I'm like looking for the end button. <laughs> I can't find it. Aw, thanks for the hugs and the likes and the laughs and the kisses.